it is possible to have many different functions, many different combinations of functions. And uh, there is practically no limit to the variations and functions that one can have. But in mathematics and especially in physics, we study functions under certain categories because we encounter certain types of functions. So these types of functions are called the standard functions. And these standard functions are useful tools in the analysis of many natural phenomena. And that is why it is important to be familiar with them right at this stage. So let us study some of these standard functions and see how they behave and how to apply their behavior to solve certain mathematical problems. We, st we start first with the modulus function. The modulus function, that is modulus of x, is defined as like this x with two bars around it and this basically gives us the positive value of whatever the value of x takes for example it is just simply equal to plus x if x is positive or greater than zero of course it is zero when x is equal to zero and it is equal to minus of x if the value of x itself is less than zero why do we have a negative sign? Because x, the number x itself has a negative sign. So we add an extra negative sign to it so that the net result is a positive. Modulus function basically gives us the absolute value or the positive value of any number x. So it is possible to have modulus of many different functions. So that is why it is important to define it as per x itself and then extend it to any other function which is inside the modulus sign. One important property of modulus sign is the taking of square roots. So square root of the square of a number is always equal to modulus of x. And it is equal to, again, since we know that the square root of the square of a number is plus value of that number or minus value of that number. So in order to write this concisely and compactly, we write it as modulus of x. Let us look at some additional properties of modulus. This is probably one of the most important standard functions that you can study. So it is important to study all the different properties of modulus of a combination of numbers and functions. The second property is that modulus of modulus of x is equal to modulus of x itself. Modulus of x is either the maximum value among either minus x or plus x depending upon what the actual value of x is. Minus of modulus of x is simply the least of the values between minus x and plus x, again, depending upon what the actual value of x is. Next, we come to modulus of the sum of two numbers x and y. If x and y are real numbers, then modulus of x plus y equals, but is generally less than modulus of x plus modulus of y. Why is that so? Because modulus of x plus modulus of y are both positive numbers and therefore their sum will be greater than modulus of x plus y because x plus y even though x plus y sounds like a big number what if y is negative then it becomes x minus y and therefore the net x plus y sum reduces and that gives us a value less than modulus of x plus modulus of y. For example, if we have x equals 4 and y equals minus 3, then modulus of x plus y equals modulus of 4 minus 3 
and that's equal to modulus of 1. Modulus of 1 is simply equal to 1. On the right hand side, we have modulus of x plus modulus of y and that's equal to modulus of 4 plus modulus of minus 3 and that's equal to 4 plus 3 and that's equal to 7. So this simple example proves this identity that modulus of x plus y is always less than or equal to modulus of x plus modulus of y. Next property, modulus of x plus y equals modulus x plus modulus y if only if xy is greater than 0. That is both x and y have the same sign. So this is a corollary of the previous property that we have seen. In the example given for that, we had taken x and y as numbers having opposite signs. What if x and y are both having the same sign? Like for example, if x equals 4 and y equals 3. In that specific case, x plus y has to be equal to 7 and that modulus of 7 gives us 7 and that gives the same result on the right hand side as well. Similarly, if we take x equals minus 1 and y equals minus 2, again it results into the same thing. x plus y gives us minus 3 and modulus of minus 3 gives us plus 3. And on the right hand side, modulus of x gives us 1 plus modulus of y gives us 2, so 1 plus 2. So left hand side and right hand side is equal as long as x and y both the numbers have the same sign. And so that is summarized into this result modulus of x plus y equals modulus of x plus modulus of y as long as x and y have the same sign that is x y is positive. Next property modulus of x minus y equals modulus of x plus modulus of y if x and y are of opposite signs. When x and y are of opposite signs, their product is generally a negative number. Again, you can imagine examples where x and y are opposite sign numbers and you can verify this result like we have seen in the previous two properties. If modulus of x is less than or equal to a then this means that x is going to lie between minus a and plus a for example if modulus of x is less than or equal to 2 this means that it is going to lie somewhere between minus 2 and plus 2 say if x equals minus 1.5 and that means modulus of x is equal to 1.5 is less than or equal to 2 and so obviously we know that minus 2 is less than or equal to minus 1.5 and minus 1.5 is less than or equal to 2 so therefore with this simple example we have demonstrated the truth of this property.